We got two game updates this week that I'm very excited about, but before all of that 10 kilometer egg time, it has become tradition at this point to lead with one as long as I can keep getting one each week. I also have a 5k hatching at the same time, but the 10k should be first. We got a Hitmonchan from the 10k egg. We already hatched one of those out of the four we've had so far. What are the odds? And Hitmonchan is not that great. In fact, not even good. Nidorino, Tangela, and Bellsprout all have higher base attack than Hitmonchan by a good amount in this game. So hard to get hyped, but obviously this one is much higher level than the previous one, and we get another chance at good IVs. Although, when you hatch something that does not evolve, like Hitmonchan, moveset is very important, and it does not have Brick Break, so I know right away it can't be pure perfection. Thunder Punch is okay though. The 5k egg will yield a Krabby. Alright, not new either. Well, same mindset for IVs. And speaking of IVs, I really want to jump right into the two updates we had this week. But there's the issue with making a weekly video. There's a bunch of pre-update footage that makes up the majority of what would have been this video. But the most interesting thing right now is what's new, so I think I'll cover the update now, give some thoughts on all that, and then go back in time to go through the week. The first update we got was not a new version, there was no download, it was a server-side patch that tweaked quite a few things sometime around Friday, I imagine they make minor changes all the time, but this was a big one. But right away I found that I was beginning to get tons of potions again. For a while there you may have been lacking potions like I certainly was, a lot of people were feeling this way about the potion drought. I was thinking back to the times I had thrown away potions, wishing I could take it all back, and well it would seem they rebalanced Pokestop loot to favor potions a bit more, and now I'm right back to throwing away basic potions again. Other than that, they did change some other major aspects of the game, including spawning. Now the region-specific Pokemon are supposedly more common, and in general, people feel as though all uncommon and rare Pokemon are showing up more often, making for more variety overall, and that has been my experience as well. Of course, the Pidgey spam will always be around, but thankfully, that isn't all you see anymore, and that should make things a bit better for the more suburban folk. Not that this change makes everything fair by any means, being in a big city is still an extreme advantage, but at least even if you are not in a busy area, you might see a few more interesting things pop up on your nearby list. Another big change is the egg hatch speed being increased. Very good news for egg tracking. Comes at an awkward time for me because I just tested bike hatching in the previous video. Using the word tested lightly, I wasn't taking a very scientific approach. But here is why it was very subject to change. And we already had the well-tested number of 10.5 kilometers per hour. I just wanted to get a feel for how it would work with biking. But throw that out the window, now with the new egg speed, I have noticed, at least from walking and jogging, placebo or not, I feel like it's registering a lot more walking. I walk the same route that I often do every day and hatch a lot more now than I did before. That may also be due to the fact that it updates more frequently now, instead of only every one minute, so you aren't punished as much for not walking in a straight line. I know some people have said that they went on a bike ride to work and it still didn't count very well, but if you're biking at some 20 miles per hour, it sucks that you can't hatch eggs doing that, but they have to draw the line somewhere. I'd rather it be a bit low and cuts off biking than to be too high and encourages everyone to just drive around slowly to hatch eggs. This game shouldn't be encouraging more cars on the road. I wasn't biking too fast last week, and I bet if I redid that biking with the change, I would have gotten a lot more on those eggs. Feels bad. Also, with the busing two weeks ago when I tested that, my theory was that because of the one minute update time, and because buses stop a lot, the average speed would be lower and you might get decent egg hatching from riding a bus. For example, if you traveled 100 meters way too quickly, but then stopped for a while, that should count. Well, this change is both a nerf and a buff to that. Not that I really want buses to be OP for egg hatching. I do think that in a perfect world, walking, running, and biking would be the only way to do it, but I will be retesting bus efficacy later in the video, and maybe next time I want to go for a long walk in a straight line and just see how exactly it will track. How accurate will it be if I'm just walking under ideal conditions? I'll aim to walk like exactly 10 kilometers and just see what it records, get a percentage accuracy. That might be interesting. Alright, well, egg catching cap and updating frequency increased, that is good news. And finally, there were many moveset changes that I won't get into, I'll link this recap article below. That was the balance update that we got on the weekend. Now fast forward to Monday, they did say they were aiming to release an update every other Monday, and they released the patch notes on Monday, but the actual update seems to be rolling out around the world in I don't know what order. I finally got it around 9pm on Tuesday, I'm assuming everyone has it now. But this update, depending on who you are and what about this game is fun to you, this update could be cool, or it could be a huge disappointment. The only thing it really brought, the main feature, was an in-game IV judge. You can now get information on the IV potential of your Pokémon without going to an external calculator. The only other thing here is just a promise of, don't worry, we're working on cool stuff, please don't leave. 
Personally, I think they should have included all those server-side changes in here to beef it up and make it look better because they never mentioned anything about those changes. I can understand not wanting to talk about egg hatching speed publicly, that's more something that the community will figure out, but something like, hey, we added more potions back in, we heard you talking about that, and we made the spawning a bit better, more fun, hopefully that works out, let us know what you think. Whatever though, so the IV Judge, you can now appraise a Pokemon right in here, it's right next to Transfer, which is scary, but most of the things I'm going to be appraising are favorited, so I can't misclick and kill something. When you appraise, your team leader will come in and tell you in a mildly cryptic way what your IVs are. If you don't know tons about the main series games, you wouldn't recognize that this works practically the exact same way as it does in the main games. There's an IV Judge character in each of the Pokemon games from the third generation and onwards, and they tell you your IVs in this exact format, pretty much. So the leader will begin with the overall range, it's a different message for each person. I will link this page below as well. I like Spark here because his top tier message pours over onto two lines while the similar ones don't. But these other teams, man, you have to actually read it and remember things. Wow, very inconvenient to be on any other team, I have to say. Sarcasm. Alright, so this pincer, I know it's IVs, but what will he tell me? It can battle with the best of them, meaning it is in the best range, above 82%. He will now tell me the top stat, and for me it is attack. And the defense is great too, meaning the attack and defense are both tied for being the best. But then nothing mentioned about stamina, so that is a lower stat. He will end with this statement, which tells you what the top stat is. And he says, best he's ever seen, no doubt about it. Which means that I have a stat with perfect IVs, being of course attack and defense, since those were tied for the highest. The thing is, it doesn't tell you everything. Now I know that I have 15 attack, 15 defense but my stamina could be anything from 7 to 14, and I would still fit in this category. Now I know from this calc here that it is 14 and this is a near perfect pincer, but I couldn't get that information from the game. I think that's okay, because all I want this judge for personally is to check for 100% perfect Pokemon before I transfer one of a decent level or rarity. I can get rid of low level Pidgeys no problem because they don't have finalized moves and they're often too low level to bother powering up anyway. But now I can check something that hatches out of an egg right away, check if it is perfect or at least very high, and I don't need a bookmark it for later checking. Also, in the case where a web calc has a range of options, you could use the in-game judge in combination with it to get an exact reading, but I don't know why you would need to bother unless it's a Pokemon you really like and you're just curious about it, but in a game as simplified as Pokemon Go when compared to the main games, I think all that matters is overall potential. All three stats are useful in some way. If you don't care as much about the 100% perfection like me, maybe you just want to see that it's in the above 82% range here, and that's a good enough metric to call it a good Pokemon worth investing in. Finally, at the end, he says a thing about the size, which is an irrelevant number as far as we know, but maybe not. It is interesting that he bothers to talk about it here. It isn't a thing in the main games because weight doesn't vary, but maybe if they add in weight-based moves like Heavy Slam and Grass Knot, I don't know, could be cool. Now, of course, immediately people realized that if you name your Pokemon penis or dick or ass or anything along those lines, you can maybe imagine subbing that in to all these blanks here. In the span of two days, it has already been done to death, and yeah, depending on your mental age, you might find humor in that. Personally, I find it fucking hilarious. Your dick is tinier than any we have on record. Astounding. The size of your dick is colossal. That is indeed exceptional. Fascinating. Your dick is gigantic. The largest I've ever seen. Your dick is rather sizable, that's for sure. Oh, what a small dick. It's rather cute, I'd say. Your dick is so tiny, I almost didn't notice it. Your dick is just huge. Your dick is a big one. Whoa, that's the tiniest dick I've ever seen. That's what I think. See ya. Alright, unfortunately, nothing else in this update, so if you were hoping for the new tracking to come to everyone, nope, not yet. If you're not even playing until there's battling or trading, nope, not yet. If you were hoping for the dozens of minor quality of life tweaks suggested by the subreddit, none of that in here, only the IV calc. So, if you only care about battling or leveling or collecting and completing the Pokedex and IVs are just garbage and mean nothing to you, well, then this update means nothing to you, and I can understand not being happy about now waiting another two weeks, but I like looking for good IVs and I'm happy this is here. Not quite as good as a website that ranks all your Pokemon by percentage at the same time, but it is something. Alright, update talk is done. I'm sorry if that went on for way too long, but it is interesting to me. The updates to this game are one of the most exciting things, really, and it's kind of weird to put a promise of cool things to come in patch notes 
but I believe it is true and I am looking forward to it. Well, as far as playing the game this week went, I think I'll throw away a lot of the pre-update video because I talked about the update for all that time instead. One thing I was doing was really learning the area, especially around Fraser River Park. Went there nearly every day to take the gym and claim my 10 coins. My goal was to hit 200 and increase Pokemon storage once again because at that time there was still no good IV checking method and I was hoping, waiting for that to come before I went through and cleaned everything up again. I also like spending coins on the bag and the Pokemon storage because it never goes away, so I feel like maxing it out even if that isn't really needed. Back to learning the area, not many Pokemon spawn in the park itself, there are only a couple locations where I often find like a Meowth or a Pidgeotto, but outside the park I found this water spawn location pretty much every time I get nearby, a water Pokemon or even a Dratini will come up as nearby, and luckily now I know exactly where to go to get it, right here at the end of this parking lot it pops up every time without fail, I have found Goldeen, Staryu, Magikarp, Poliwag, and rarely the coveted Dratini, the only three I've ever caught have all been from right here. So good to know these things. By the time tracking comes around, I won't even need it. I'll just have all the spawns memorized. A bit further down this path by the river, there is another weird water spawn. Not as consistent as the other one, but sometimes there's a Magikarp or a Goldeen here. And then even further down, there are two very active spawn locations in this building that tend to spawn to something not super common, like not Rattata or Pidgey, but it could be like a Weedle, Venonat, Nidoran, Kakuna, Metapod, or even like Venomoth, Beedrill, something poison or bug-ish. Although one time there was a Squirtle, don't know why, it is nice to be learning all these locations. When I see a nearby list with Caterpie, Venomoth, and Magikarp, I know exactly where to go for all three of these Pokemon. No radar needed. I will find the Venomoth and the Caterpie in this building, and then the Magikarp at the end of the road. The park may be completely devoid of spawns, but apparently this side path has four decent ones. Can't be upset about that. I can skip through a week's worth of gym footage, this video will be long enough without the windy live battle commentary about how, oh you see how this Magikarp in the gym here may look like a troll, but that could be useful to train up the gym a ton and make it super powerful. Well, we took out many gyms, there was a Mystic one with a Pidgeot and a Flareon, a Valor one with only a Seedra, easy take, of course that Magikarp gym which also had a Jolteon in the back, Electabuzz just soloed that one, sad thing is Jolteon is a pushover, meanwhile I might even be losing to a Vaporeon even with the type advantage, all the evolutions totally don't have the same base stat total or anything. There was a Mystic gym with a very weak Jinx, then quite a large Valor gym with nearly a CP2000, Vaporeon, and Dragonite, thought I might have to whittle that one down, but I was able to take it out first try with only 4 Pokemon. The attacker is very favored even if you don't bother dodging. Quick tip, if you don't know, you can revive and heal multiple Pokemon at the same time if you tap on them at the same time. I assume if your device is powerful enough to run the game, it is also multi-touch capable. At this point in the week is when the first server-side update came, and like I said, I was finding new and more interesting Pokemon. I found a first ever Pikachu here, I've only ever seen the occasional Weedle spawn there. I was able to track down the first Golduck I've ever seen as well, it turned out to be in the alt water spawn along this path, only ever seen Goldeen and Magikarp there, and I also found a Nita arena out of nowhere, and later in the week several Parasects started showing up just all of a sudden, new Pokemon that are usually just Pidgey. This wasn't after a level up or any other change, so I am willing to believe spawning was improved. Well, it was back to gyms every day, I don't know who battles the gym all the way down to 210 prestige in a gym with only a 600 combat power Lickitung and then leaves it, oh I can't possibly defeat that, and then the next day I saw a Lapras up there and feared what massive gym I was getting myself into, but it was actually only a Lapras and a low leveled one at that, easy gym. I finally got to the 200 coins and bought myself some extra Pokemon storage, up to 350 now. Of course that video crashed and didn't save, screen recorders are the best. There are also eggs, so many eggs, eggs are fun, especially in montage form. I hatched a tentacle, but that didn't record, then a Jigglypuff, Wigglytuff is a monster in this game, then a Bellsprout, the surprisingly high combat power Pokemon, and finally a Ponyta. I know I hatched a lot more than that this week because all these starred Pokemon are from hatches, but if the screen recorder broke and didn't record properly, I don't know what to do about that. The fun part for me is going through and checking IVs, you already saw them mid-hatching. And now after a cut, I have as well. I found out what I could between a web calc and the game IV judge, and I unfavored the ones not special enough, not over 90%. Turns out that tentacle is pretty dang good, didn't see that one coming. But as a not fully evolved Pokemon, the moveset is up in the air. Well, I'm likely to evolve that one eventually and find out. It does show some potential. Okay, final part of the video, I did promise it, will be the bus journey across the city once more. I had a thing to do again, and I may as well write Pokemon Go into those plans. 
The bus journey would be a total of 15 kilometers, 7.5 each way, and I wanted to see what of that would count towards an egg. I started with an egg at 0.5 out of 2, and I tried to record the jogger medal to get an exact starting point. I really tried. The first time, the recorder crashed, but I noticed, so I tried again, and it crashed again before I got to it. But the second time, I just hoped it worked because I was dealing with getting on the bus. Well, I can show you what it would have looked like, something like that. Obviously, I could Photoshop it well, but then it feels like I'm trying to lie. Anyway, the bus journey ensued. Many captures, many Pokestops. I could montage it, but what would be the point? When I got off, there was quite the swarm of Pokemon, as well as one of those new Parasect I was starting to see. Cool that these spawns do seem to be getting better now. I closed the app for any walking I had to do, and I only opened it again for the ride back. Caught a pretty high-leveled Fero, which was fairly interesting, higher than the ones I've evolved. Saw some other things, like a Tauros, which is right in line with the regional Pokemon spawning more often. But now, results. When I got back and checked, I should mention the 2k egg hatched along the way, but I wasn't able to record it, and I had 2.9 on the 5k egg, so we did get at least 4.4k according to the eggs, but I didn't get the next incubator on right away, so more importantly, the jogger medal was at 146.38, which would mean we got a total of 4.95k recorded in the game for a 15 kilometer bus journey, which is pretty darn good, getting a third of the distance for riding on a bus, probably more than I deserve. I bet biking at the speed I was in the previous video would be really good if I got a third for taking the bus. I know that my findings aren't very scientific, and taking this random bus route in Vancouver doesn't really help anyone out there because all bus routes and speeds will vary a ton. It was more a point of interest to me to see how much it tracked. And like I said, I may do the same thing for walking next time, just get a real good idea of how accurate it is. Well, hopefully you found it interesting. I'll wrap this week's video here. It did not turn out how I expected it to at the beginning of the week, but that's usually the way it is with these. I record tons of stuff expecting to put something together with live gym battles and egg hatches and some sort of bus trip vlog thing, but end up cutting 10 seconds of jump cuts out of three hours of footage and throwing the rest away because I talked about the game update. I thought that might be the more interesting thing. Hopefully you agree, but not everyone will. Cannot please everyone. I know that very well. So I'll just keep having fun with this game and the series for a couple more weeks that are left before I become busy as hell. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. For this week's random after video scene, no need for apples, we must say goodbye to a dear friend, this dilapidated cheap vinyl staples chair. After three years of comfort, my god, what a mess. I fixed it twice, ordered a new free replacement arms after the first one started cracking, and when the entire back was falling off because some metal fastener snapped, took it all apart and welded a new one. Well, now with the upholstery all falling off everywhere, one of the plastic wheels having snapped off, and the cushion being completely gone, it is time to bid farewell. Goodbyes are always so difficult. I remember the day I picked it out, the most comfortable chair in the store, and on sale too. I can't help but feel like there's still so much comfort left in it, but it must go. What a truly sad day. Well, that isn't gonna fit. Why is this person's garbage can so much bigger? Look at how easily that fits. That's not fair. Time to work on the replacement. It'll never fill the void left by that cheap vinyl chair, even if it is actual leather and superior in every way. What could I do to build this chair in five seconds? Oh wait, a montage. Yep, you'll have to do. Rest in peace, old chair. Dicks out for chair, please, everyone. Although I don't expect anyone to be watching the video at this point, so I really don't think that movement will get off the ground. Quite a shame.